Thank you all. There are many special dignitaries here, and I want to especially thank them for being here because their time is so important and they've been serving our community and for them to take time to attend this event means a lot to me. Thank you all for being here and all the community members. <clears throat> Words and phrases have a way of meaning different things to different people. A few years ago, a young man had to fill out an application form to buy an insurance policy. One of the questions posed was, how old was your father when he died and what did he die from? The problem, his father's criminal record ended with a hanging in the village square, but he did not want to reveal the fact to the insurance company. He puzzled over the problem for a while. Finally, he wrote, my father was 65 when he died. He came to his end while participating in a public function when the platform gave way. <laughs> it is a real honor for me to be attending this public function to share my vision with you. And I am so glad that this platform will not give way. <laughs> the vision I want to discuss with you today is not what we see with our eyes, but it is more about the way we see, the way we understand what we see, and how our interpretation of what we see affects what we get. I firmly believe that the way we see things determines the vision we are able to create for ourselves. This point is illustrated in a story from World War II. In 1941, planners in the United States Army Air Corps had a vision to create a segregated fighting squadron which enlisted only black pilots and black ground support members. Although it was a well-known fact that new pilots were desperately needed to support our troops, there were some decision makers inside the Air Corps who did not believe or support the new vision. In spite of the hard work of the pilots in training, they were consistently marked unfit by their superiors and denied chance to fight in action. Then something remarkable happened. A lady with a different vision visited Tuskegee Army Airfield where the pilots were practicing. Unlike the generals, she saw beyond the old accepted beliefs, she, she saw no difference in capabilities between races. To prove her point, she insisted on taking a ride alone in an airplane with a black pilot at the controls. Friends, that lady was Eleanor Roosevelt. <clears throat> Wife of the 32nd President, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, her pilot was a man named Charles Anderson. Mrs. Roosevelt used the photographs of her flight to convince her husband and the unbelieving military leadership that these pilots could indeed fly as well as any white man. Her goal was to activate participation of the Tuskegee Airmen in the defense of our country, and it worked. When the Tuskegee Airmen entered into the combat over North Africa, they exemplified courage, skill, and dedication in combat. They flew in more than 15,000 sorties, completing over 1,500 missions during the war, 
and they never lost an escorted bomber to enemy fighters. No other escort unit of any color could claim such a record. When the war ended, Tuskegee Airmen returned home with 150 distinguished flying crosses, legions of merit, and red star of Yugoslavia. This success would contribute to the eventual integration of the United States military. The accepted reality was changed because Eleanor Roosevelt held a different vision. Had she not been so daring, had the black airmen not been so determined, their mutual visions might never have been allowed to become a reality. And the course of the war might have been very different. So, I tell you again, the way we see things determines the vision we are able to create for ourselves. It was Teddy Roosevelt who said, we must keep <clears throat> our eyes on the stars and our feet on the ground. My father would have added, and never settle for being less than your dreams. As I grew older, and I attained success as a physician and then as an entrepreneur and a businessman, I constantly moved my dreams upwards and outwards and I always heard my father, father's voice telling me, you can do more, you can be more. So I never contented myself with ordinary ideas or the trend of the moment. <clears throat> I always pushed for bigger dreams, greater visions. For me, <clears throat> for me, it has always been true that when I believed I could achieve something, I could see it completed even before I began. Our, <laughs> our subconscious minds make all the, their words and actions fit in a pattern consistent with our self-concept. I truly believe that a positive thinker sees the invisible, feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. <clears throat> there is a Chinese, Chinese proverb that says, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. <laughs> the second best time to plant a tree is now. I would humbly suggest that now is the time for us to plant our tree of dreams for Clearwater and the Tampa Bay area. A dream of creating a medical college that through its regional partners will be actively involved not only in creating new pipeline for physicians, but also improving the retention rate of clinicians in Clearwater and Tampa Bay region by improving the clinical practice culture and the climate. Now is the time to put our best visions to work, to think boldly about what our community can become, to do, as my father suggested, settle for nothing less than our greatest dreams for the kind of place we want to build. The Tampa Bay area holds a special place in our hearts. And now, with our investment on this 27-acre property for the creation of NOAA Southeastern Clearwater Campus, the Tampa Bay area holds a special place in our dreams. A dream that the Dr. Kiran C. Patel College of Medicine and Dr. Pallavi Patel College of Healthcare Sciences will become a world-class medical, nursing, and paramedical college that will attract top academicians, clinicians, and students 
both domestic and international, who now may prefer to go in places like Gainesville, Miami, or maybe the East Coast or the West Coast of USA. A dream to help national physicians reduce the national physician shortage. A dream to create radical curricular innovation to train the physicians of the future. A dream to develop and integrate novel technologies within the curricula. A dream to devote research over the entire translational continuum of care. A dream to impact healthcare delivery and community health. A dream of many new jobs created, offering higher wages for Clearwater workers, hundreds of jobs, and even thousands as the domino effect spurs quality expansion and redevelopment. Friends, I like to build things to last for years, and I am very patient about it. I will work for years to bring something of value into the world, because after all, that is what it takes to make dreams come true. Impossible is not a word in my dictionary. Speaking only for myself as a businessman and entrepreneur, I assure you that my family and I are very much invested in the Tampa Bay area. This is our home, the home of our children and our grandchildren. Come what may, our vision, our futures, our dreams are irrevocably linked with each and every one of you here. What happens in this community certainly matters to me, my wife Pallavi, and my children. We know that how things look on the outside of a community depends on what's going on the inside of the community. Your vision matters to our dreams. I hope we share the dream to create a medical college that is designed to have significant impact on its host institution, its graduates, the workforce, the region, and the entire healthcare ecosystem. In closing, let me relate to a quote from the former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt who wrote, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. She strongly believed in the beauty of her own dreams. She believed in helping other people's dream come true as she did with the Tuskegee Airmen. And I think her example can serve the Tampa Bay Clearwater communities today. Let us choose our dreams, believe in their beauty, articulate them carefully, and then let us work together to make them come true. Do not forget that impossible is a word used by those who are too comfortable in their existing environment. They are not willing to explore their God-given power to change the environment and reach greater heights. Let us not allow anyone to tie our dreams down to the dusty earth. Instead, let our dreams take flight like the Tuskegee Airmen so that we can soar with our dreams reach the heights of our aspiration and take charge of our vision because what we see and what we believe really is what we will get. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you. So, I am very serious. Those of the influential people here should adopt this college. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Dr. Kiran C. Patel and Pallavi Patel, and, Dr. Pallavi Patel. And truly, 
make it an institute to reckon with. We want to be the number one in the country. Thank you.